Yo, are you telling me? Yo, Florian, Lung Gang and that. Let's go. What's up, Merab? Yo, Alex. Yo, Hamza. What are you guys saying? Lung Gang rapping and that. I thought I'd come rapping as that. Hey, Mira, what's up? Hey, you lot got one more week, man. Then that's it. The year 13 grind starts. Yo, Shrish. What are you saying? Well, go on to see. Are you lot looking forward to going back to school? One more year, innit? Yo, Vit. Yo, Farhan. Thanks, Marab. Thanks, Sophia. Yo, Hamish. First lesson, Abdullah, where you been, man? You been ghosting? Maybe the first of many. Here's the last uh, summer school lesson. I can't believe how quick it's going. This is going to go crazy quick. Yo, Lucas, what are you saying? For October mocks, are we doing the 2023 maths A-level exams? Uh, Hamza, if you're talking with me personally, then uh, no. But with your school, I'm not sure what they'll do. Usually they don't because they because every kid predicts that that's going to happen. So most likely, if your school is smart, they won't just give you the October paper. I mean, the the June papers. See, that's a mechanics lesson. For real, Florin, we need to get a little bit of, of a mix in it. Yo, Rahaf. Thanks, man. <laughs> hey, Emma. Welcome back. I'm good, Naseeb. I'm good. I'm trying to get my head ready now for next week. I'm with year 13. I'm reformatting all the lessons for the full course. Uh, next week, we start with uh, algebra and all that stuff. But I'm on February now on the reformatting stuff. So nearly there. Yo, Ali. Yes, Marab. It's going to be sick. Two lessons a week. It's going to be intense. But, man, it's it's going to be worth it. I'm telling you. Scared for my year two. Hey, Favor. You're scared for my year two content. Well, let's just say my um my uh course is not easy. I do a lot, but I also set the standard so that you know when you come to your real exam that you've seen everything before. That's what's really important is exposure. Mass is all about exposure. How much have you seen? Because think about it. I've been doing mass for a long time now. Um, and still every paper I see is different, but I apply the skills that I know from tons of exposure, uh, which means that no paper can phase me. And that's why I can give a really realistic perspective on how hard the papers were. So you, as you guys know, the gray boundaries were quite high for the papers just done, but that's because the questions were easy. It's not because the exam boards are being mean or whatever. It's literally because the papers were easy. So, yeah, it's just a reality check. Do you teach the year two stuff from the week? Yes, Rahaf, for sure. Start from all the basics and then I build it up super quick. When will my dashboard on the website change? Uh, Ali, this week you'll have access to everything. I'm just um, putting up the finishing touches for September. But yeah, this week, I think you'll be on Saturday. So keep an eye, Ali, on Saturday. It will be it will be there for you. What would you say are the hardest topics in year two? Integration, Lucas, for sure. These finding areas, I'd probably say like maybe parametric integration is the hardest. But that's because of computational stuff. But really, it's not that difficult if you do enough practice. Trust me, it's not that bad. If Because you lot might see on my TikToks, right? I do these crazy uh, integration questions. Joe, I don't know if you guys saw, I uploaded a integration question where it was like, um, this is a year six SATS question. And it was like the maddest integration. Like that question is not going to come up in A-level maths. It was just me trolling in it. It was a really hard integration. Even I was like, <laughs> even I was sweating a bit. Uh, but yeah, that's just me trolling. But maths doesn't get that hard. Um, but yeah, integration probably is the hardest topic in uh, maths. Is your course going to be on YouTube or Zoom? 
uh, Abdullah, it's going to be on YouTube, but private links. So only the students who are on my full course will get to see it. What do you think about the GCSE grey boundaries? Uh, shush, they were standard. The thing about GCSE is because there's so, uh, such a huge sample size, year on year, grey boundaries don't really change. And it's a bit of a surprise, I guess, this year because the GCSE papers were also quite easy. Um, which I think they went up slightly, but they were pretty much the same. Yo, Uma. How many people in the year 13? I can't remember. I don't know. Oh, that's the answer. I don't know. But there's like, uh, there's enough. Like, you'll see in the Jumbo guys, I always set, show at the end what the prices are of my full course. Um, it has gone up again slightly because every week you guys are sending me the code word summer you want to join. And like I said, um, spots do fill up quickly at a certain discount. So they are being uh, taken. Yo, is Usman. What about year two for the maths? Uh, Lucas, I don't have courses for year two for the maths, but I have videos. Uh, I just uploaded one on TikTok. It looks like I'm uh, <laughs> doing maths in like a, a fire cell or something. I don't know what happened with the camera quality, but yeah, I'd, I'll upload further math stuff on, on TikTok for sure. In terms of a course, I don't have one just yet. I will build one eventually, but I can't guarantee in time for when you sit your exam. So just stay tuned on TikTok, innit? Uh, uni maths Freudian is different. You're, if you end up studying maths at uni, you'll see that the type of questions that are asked at university level maths are very different. It's more proof-based stuff. It's not really computational stuff. So yeah, it was a bit of a culture shock for me as well. I just scraped the nine. Nice shush. That's a, that's a W. That's a W. I paid, I think your student told me, told me, do I have to pay extra? Uh, Merab, the, oh, that would be one of my sales team. Do I just mess it? They will be on the chat. They'll probably be able to see this, but I assume if you, you paid the 300 last week, then, then you're all sorted. Don't worry about it. So I saw some shorts really about mess. Thanks, Naseeb. I respect it. So guys, today I'm going to do a little bit of revision for you on uh, mechanics. So last week we did the binomial distribution warming up on stats, but now I'm going to warm up on, on mechanics. So the first thing we're going to look at is motion and a lift. Uh, students don't seem to like motion and lift. I uh, don't know why. It's super easy. So we'll learn through examples. So it says, uh, Shrish, I don't actually teach physics. I love physics, but I don't have a um, teaching qualification for physics. It's only maths. Sorry. So it says, a woman of mass 60 kg stands on the floor of an elevator, which is moving downward with an acceleration of 0 0.2 meters per second squared. Calculate the magnitude of the force exerted by the floor. On the woman. Yo, Ibrahim. So, Amira, we are going to use that. Guys, when you see a question like this, it's mechanics. What's the first thing you should be doing? And before what Amira said, the F equals MA, what should we be doing first? Good, Zing. What's up? We should be doing a sketch. Yeah. Sketch and label the forces. So, like, in maths, yeah, then, especially mechanics, they might not um draw the diagram for you you're gonna have to do it yourself so we have an elevator it's gonna be uh carried by some cable yeah and then they don't actually tell us anything they only tell us about this woman so guys what forces can we put on this diagram i mean in this question i haven't told you guys very much but what could you add to this diagram the weight good uh amira the weight and tension. So like the cable will have tension. Yeah, that's it. The, the question I've written doesn't even talk about the, the cable, but personally, I think you guys should write it. Then we've got the weight of the woman. Yeah, so it'll be 60 times gravity. And as Zane said, the acceleration downwards. Yeah, so we are uh, moving downwards with an acceleration of 0 0.2. And has anyone else said it? Okay, good, Aaron, the reaction force. Now, this is important to understand about lifts. Um, another thing we can actually add is the mass of the lift. I'm gonna put it there. I'm gonna say capital MG, where M is the mass of lift. Now the woman, when she's standing in the lift, you have to imagine 
you're the person in the lift. If you're the woman in the lift, the only contact you're experiencing is with the floor of the lift, right? If you're the woman, you don't know anything about the cable, you don't know anything about the mass of the lift, none of these things affect you, yeah? In fact, the mass of the lift and the tension in the cable affects the acceleration. But in terms of the forces, those forces do not affect the woman. It's the acceleration that's going to affect the woman. Now, like I said, you're the woman in the lift, you're standing on the floor. The woman is going to experience a reaction force for being or standing in the lift. And this is what the question is asking us to find, this reaction force. Yeah. So the woman is only experiencing this weight downwards, this reaction from standing on the floor, and the fact that the elevator is accelerating downwards. That's it. This has nothing to do with the woman. This has nothing to do with the woman. These implicitly are, you know, involved with this calculation, yeah, which I've done for you. So guys, in the chat, can you write down the equation of motion of the woman? What is the equation of motion now? And then we'll be able to find R. Now, to be careful in terms of the direction of motion here. Let's see, Zane. You are, you are right, Amira. Just, uh, you could write down what uh, F is as well. Good, guys. So, the downward force, so we're going down. So, the downward force is the larger one, so 60G. Subtract any force that's opposing that, which is R. So, remember, F equals MA. F is the net force. Is the mass of the woman 60 times 0 0.2? And I didn't get my calculator ready. One sec. And then, ah, oh, it's there. Cool. So, we've got, um, well, it'll be 60G minus 60 times 0 0.2, right? 60 times G minus 60 times 0 0.2. 576. Cool. Now, we use gravity to be uh, 9.8, right? So we should approximate this to 580 newtons to 2SF. In mechanics, guys, do not, if you use gravity, do not go more than 3SF, you'll lose marks. So if you did write 576, you'd get the mark, but technically should be 2SF. Now, I just want to show you guys something because um, uh, I want you to understand what happens when you uh, get in a lift and Sometimes you feel lighter and heavier in a lift, and we can show why that's the case. I'm just going to type in 60 times 9.8 for you. So about 588. So this uh, here is 588. And this is 580. Yeah? Now, uh, before I, I clarify something, guys, if you're in a lift and you start accelerating downwards, do you feel heavier? or lighter in the lift. I want you to imagine you're in a lift and it starts going down. Do you feel lighter or heavier? Physics students do use 9.81, um, but uh, in mass, stick to 9.8, guys. Yo, Frank. Frank, you're starting earlier than everyone else, it looks like. Loads of you seeing lighter. Yes. Good. Guys, when you're in a lift and you start going down, you feel lighter, right? Now, the reason you're feeling lighter is because your contact force with the ground is less, yeah? And you can see that 580 is smaller than 588. R is the contact force with the ground, yeah? So your contact force is less than your weight pushing down, which is why you feel lighter in the lift. If we're accelerating upwards, yeah, when you're still, then you move upwards, you feel heavier, right? That's because the contact force will be larger than that 588. So your contact force is greater, yeah? So that's why, this is uh, mathematically why you either feel lighter or heavier in a lift. Nice, does gravity depend on the exam board? Uh, Frank, is situational, but for A-level maths, you should be using uh, 9.8, but there might be specific questions where they say uh, use 10, yeah? 
they do it in all exam boards but just go with 9.8 otherwise nice okay next one guys says a cable car of mass pkg is pulled up a steep hill by a cable attached to the top of the car a woman of mass qkg is standing inside the car the car is uniformly accelerating up at 0.6 meters per second squared the woman experiences a constant normal reaction of magnitude 728 newtons from the floor of the car and there is a constant tension force of 15288 newtons in the cable of the car determine the value of q and the value of p okay so guys i'm going to do our our standard box and the woman standing in tell me what forces we can add and where there will be so that's my woman standing in the the cable car gustavo and that what forces have we got going on here So tension, sure, and that would be acting from the cable, and we have this force, 15288 newtons, G acting down, yes, so we're going to have G acting down of the woman. Now, the woman is QKG, right? So for the woman, we're going to put QG, yeah, QG, and good we got the mass of the cable car we've got the acceleration upwards of 0 0.6 so we got the mass of the cable car which is p then g and then what do you guys say the acceleration now the this force here the reaction of magnitude 2728 where am i putting that uh accelerating up 0 0.6 yeah so where are we putting that reaction on the woman's head up or down good up yeah so now we understand where the reaction force is located all right so from here we need to work out what p and q are okay so guys what are we going to do first are we going to work out q and the value of p simultaneous um it'll be a bit easier than that zane i know there's two unknowns but we don't actually need to do it's kind of like simultaneous but we could figure out one of the the letters first and then we'll substitute after which is kind of simultaneous to be fair but your um one of the equations will just have one unknown anyway so paddy f equals ma on what though find total force by taking away so amira we are going to do that uh, Thanusha, we you are basically correct and what Zane said. It's on the right line. Maybe you guys can write down what the equation of motion is that we would be using here. F equals MA on vertical forces. So Frank, we don't actually want to use all of them. Yeah. So Paddy on the woman basically, yes. And Zane, exactly. That's the uh the equation of motion we're gonna use. Uh, other way around though, because remember we're going up, right? And no, that exactly. So, guys, you first you look at the woman first, and then you look at the whole system. Yeah. So you focus on the forces acting on the woman, then you focus on the full system, which is basically the cable car. Yeah. So, uh, that's it, Joel. So we got the woman. Now the woman's going up with the cable car, the positive force is 728. Subtract the negative forces, which is only QG. Yeah, the woman is only exerting a force of her weight on the lift. Equals the mass, or well, the mass of the woman is Q, times 0 0.6. And from there, we're just going to rearrange. So uh, 9.8. Uh, 9.8 plus 0 0.6 is 10.4, right? 9.8. 10.4. 
I always make silly mistakes. Yeah, 10.4. So we've got 10.4 Q. Now, hopefully I've written this so that the numbers work out quite nice. 7, 2, 8 divided by the answer. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. So Q is 17. Now, what's the next thing we're going to do? That's it, Lucas. Now, maybe you guys can write down what the equation of motion is of the system. Can you guys try it? Because there's something we need to be careful of. Uh, Prabhat, don't worry about the units. Uh, it'll be kg, obviously. But yeah, you don't have to worry about Because in the question, it says woman of mass qkg. When they say find the value of q, the units isn't that um, important. Um, good question, Zane. So you could be moving upwards, but decelerating, which means that the lift is slowing down, right? So if the question said that the lift is traveling upwards and decelerating, you'd point the arrows up, but the acceleration would be negative. Yeah, so you'd still have upwards as the positive forces. Yeah, so just be careful with the language. Yeah, if it's if it's moving up, the acceleration should be pointing up. When doing the whole system to ignore the woman's... That's a good question, Lucas. Uh, do we ignore that 728, guys, when we are doing the whole system? This is something that students uh, make many mistakes with. So, for example, Ryan has excluded it. Josh has included it. Do we include or exclude the 728 when talking about the full system? I've asked a separate question, I guess. Zane and Sophia saying, yeah. Did, oh, is that you saying, yeah, exclude it? Exclude it? What do you guys think? Yeah, we exclude it. Yeah, so guys, imagine... I'm, I'm asking you guys to imagine a lot of things. Imagine you are the, the cable, yeah? If you're the cable, the contact force of the woman to the floor is got nothing to do with you. In fact, if you're the cable, you don't even know that there's a woman in there. Yeah. Think of it like that. The cable doesn't even know that there is a woman in the lift. It's just pulling some weight. That's all. That's what we mean by the system. Yeah. The cable is pulling what? doesn't care that whatever's inside the lift, yeah, it could be a dragon or something, yeah, it doesn't make a difference, it's just, what weight am I pulling, so for the system, we have 15,288, subtract the PG, subtract the QG, well, we know what Q is now, is 70G, equals the mass, now the mass that the cable is pulling is P and Q, yeah, P and 70. P and 70 times 0 0.6. And it's here where we just rearrange for P. Yeah. Sounds like you guys are having that enlightening moment where you realize that a lot of students before had been including this. But you understand now why you don't. So we have... Let's do in the, this thing in the calculator first. Let's do 15.288 minus... 70 times 9.8. Okay, so we have this. 14602. Minus G, which is 9.8. P. Here we have to expand. 0 0.6 P plus 70 times 0 0.6. 42. Uh, this comes here. And this comes here. So this is what? 10.4p. Uh, do I trust myself? Guys, correct me if I'm wrong. 14.560. I think that's right. Seems right. So uh, 14.560. Divide 10.4. Hopefully my numbers work out here. Nice. Let's go. It's always a, a good day when my numbers work out here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hopefully your mechanics feeling more confident than that. Let's go. Lung gang and that.
All right, next one. Horizontal surfaces. So I'm kind of showing you guys all the stuff you should have learned about in year 12. So horizontal surfaces and connected particles. You always just have to... Yeah, Zane. There's so many iterations to me. I, did I used to show you guys this? I, like, I, oh, my papers are all like covered in tea and stuff. But you might not be able to see it. But like, I got sheets of paper where you can see like all my working, and they take me forever to like. There's some mechanic stuff I was doing with the year 13s last year, so it takes me a long time to like. I do it old school as well. I like doing things on a piece of paper. But yeah, these are all my working to make sure that your questions work out. I'm trying to see if there's anything you guys will have seen. Maybe, maybe not. Because I had some normal distribution stuff in there as well. So. <laughs> so when the, there's sometimes though where I do the uh, question and the, the numbers are just awful. I'm going through my year 13 lessons from last year. And I keep my notes on there so I can see what the answers were. And I'm like, whoa, the numbers there were terrible. So I'm rewriting some of them. Doing the questions with a teacher is so much more reassuring. For sure, Mira. Wait until you get to uh, March with me. And we're doing two papers a week. And then you get two for homework. Man, crazy exposure. All my year for we my year 13s. We go through 62 papers between January and June, which is nuts. So many papers, but the exposure is crazy. <laughs> hey, Wasima, big things. Five stages of grief, for sure. I'm always sweating when I'm doing my questions because uh, I'm always worried that I've made a mistake. In term well, not a mistake, but that my numbers aren't as great. So in horizontal surfaces, we've got two objects, A and B, of masses 5 kg and 3 kg, respectively are connected by a light inextensible string. Object A is pulled by a horizontal force of magnitude 40 newtons along a rough horizontal surface. Objects A and B experience frictional forces of magnitude 12 newtons and 4 newtons respectively. Find the acceleration and tension. All right, so as always, guys, you know we're going to do a sketch. Is there any possibility of having access just to practice papers? Uh, Lucas, yes, you'd have to wait until March, though. Um, the only thing about that is if you join in March, then you won't have learned my methods of doing things. So it might get confusing. So, yeah, that's all I would say. But then you'd have to or maybe wait till January. But I'll, I wouldn't recommend. But it's still better than nothing, right? Okay, so. Uh, guys, what forces are we adding to the diagram? And also in year two, so here I've given you the frictional forces. I'm going to take this way as positive as well. This is the positive direction. Uh, so you can tell me left or right, up or down. Um, what is it? What was I saying? Yeah, in year two, I wouldn't just give you the magnitude of friction. We do something known as, or we use something known as the coefficient of uh, friction to calculate what friction is and stuff like that. So it changes a bit in uh, A level, uh, year 13. Um, YSF, six months starts in a week. Should I start doing year 12 revision? For sure. That's what we're doing now, right? We're preparing ourselves for year 13, getting our brains warmed up. And uh, Naseeb, it's tomorrow at 2 30. Remember, you don't want to be too early, my friend. <laughs> How do things work? You teach us the methods. Yeah, Merab, that's exactly it. So I teach you how to be a beast at each individual topic. Then from March, basically, we bang out papers together that I've written. Yeah, so I make them slightly harder than normal. Yo, Chunky. Okay, so we got the masses down and the reactions upwards. And uh, like Amira said, we got the tensions. Yeah. Now, you have to understand what we mean by tension. Tension always points away from the objects in question. Yeah. So my tensions are going to point away from the objects in question. And I've also said it's inextensible, meaning that tension is constant throughout. Yeah. So towards each other, exactly. Now, uh, in my homework for this, yeah, you guys can check it out afterwards, is I do a, uh, a tow bar. So if 
it's a tow bar connecting two cars. So as the car is driving, the tow bar is trying to keep the cars together. So it acts like tension. But then I say one of the cars starts braking. Now, when two cars start braking, they want to come towards each other. So it means the tow bar starts generating a force called thrust, which points away. Yeah. So that would work slightly different. But because I'm talking about a string, a string can only exert tension. Now, another thing is that if I call this A and this one B, is that the downward forces you guys were saying, so like this would be 5G and 3G, they are always going to be equal to the reaction forces, up equals down. Yeah, they're not jumping all over the place. But when you get to year 13, we are going to do inclined planes. So we're going to be resolving forces and all that stuff. You might have seen it already on my TikTok that we do uh, forces on an inclined plane. In those situations, the um, reaction force is not equal to what's pointing down. Yeah, you have to do like triangles of forces and trigonometry and stuff. Okay, so um, where object A is being pulled by a horizontal force of magnitude 40 newtons. And then we have frictional forces of 12 and 4. Yeah, so one thing I really try and reiterate with my students is how to draw good diagrams. Things that just look clean. Why would you label uh, Hamza experience? I just prefer my objects moving to the right. And A is the one that's driving this system. So A has to be on the right. Yeah, A can't be on the left if things are moving to the right, isn't it? So if you put A on the left side, then you would have to be traveling in the opposite direction to what I've said. Yeah, the positive would be pointing towards the left. But I keep it, you know, always keep things the same. Yeah, so... What I've shown you now, do that every single time, yeah? Don't change the order, because when you get to the exam, you don't want to be playing about and doing different things. Okay, the next thing is we write the equations of motion for A and B separately, yeah? So we basically imagine there's a dotted line here. Yeah, we write the equations of motion for A and B separately. And like I said, these up and downs don't make a difference. Yeah, we're only looking at the lefts and right because we're not on an inclined plane, so we don't need to worry about that. So guys, in the chat, write me the equation of motion for A. Uh, Faith, every exam board have to do this, yeah? So don't think that this is exclusive to OCR or Edx or anything like that. It's generalized. Normal maths A level is basically the same for all of them. Uh, close, Samira, you're just missing one more force in what you said. Look carefully at A. Maybe you want to tick forces off that are acting on A. You're just missing one more force there. Exactly. Tension. So what would it actually look like? And write the whole sentence. What would the whole sentence be? Exactly. Good, Amira. And I don't know. You could say that as well. Yeah, if you want to simplify it. Good cartoon. So for A, the positive force is 40. Subtract all the... And you can tick these off. So when you guys get to year 13 and you have these inclined planes, I'll always tell you to tick off forces to make sure you've used everything. So it'll be 40 minus 12 minus tension is the mass, which is 5 times the acceleration. Yeah. Would you advise doing past papers from every exam board for revision close to exams? Uh, Lucas, focus on your exam board first. And if you run out of things, um, yeah, for sure. Get exposure from other exam boards because the questions are all the same, basically. Yo, Josh, no problem, man. Now for B, the positive force is actually T this time. And subtract 4 is the mass 3 times acceleration. Now, if you've done this properly, what do you do to the two equations, guys? I'm not going to give much away, but if you've done the equations of motion properly, you should always be able to do something to two equations for a certain outcome. Good, Lucas, you add them. Good, Amira and Mirab. Why do you add them? Because what should always happen if you've done it properly? Yeah, get rid of T, yeah, Hamza. So we add them to just get rid of the T. One should, so if you guys have done this properly, there should always be a positive T and a minus T. So when you add them, they just cancel. So we're left with 40 minus 12 minus 4. 40 minus 12 is 28. 28 minus 
4 is 24 is 8a. So a is 3 meters per second squared. Then to find b, you just sub it into one of the equations. Well, this is the easier one, right? t is, add the 4 over, 4 plus 3 times a. So 13 newtons. That's it. Uh, oh, wait, wait, is it 6? Oh, okay. Why is it 5a and not? So Harrison, remember, it's f equals ma, m being the mass. So 5g is the weight, which uses a force rather than the uh, mass. Yeah, so be careful. Uh, Amira, we are doing simultaneous. Yeah, we're just adding them. It's elimination, isn't it? Good. So it's all about the sketch, guys. The hardest part of this question was the sketch. Make sure the diagram's correct. And the exact same happens in year 13. It's all about the diagram. Yeah, so maybe you guys, you guys will probably be able to understand a lot of it. Yeah, go on my TikTok. I did a question with like a particle on a, on a plane. And then there was P here and like 25 newtons, I think uh, 25 degrees, something like that. And I do these like triangle forces. You'll be able to understand quite a lot of that if you um, watch it. It's all in the diagram. Uh, I underline my answers, Merab, to indicate where my answer is. Because in your A-level exams, you just get a lined paper. You always want to tell the examiner where your answer is. Yeah? Okay. Just a quick reminder, guys. This is uh, the last session before I start the full year 13 course. So just to remind you, over the course of year 13, there's 36 weeks of lessons. Each week has two lessons. Each of those lessons are two hours. So four hours per week. And uh, I forgot to update this, but it's actually 62 papers you're going to be doing over the course of the year. Yeah. So you'll have 144 uh, exam style homeworks. Each of these homeworks have uh, 10 questions. And for each question, I do video solutions to ensure that you know exactly how I would have answered the question. Yeah. So maybe you're doing the question and you get it right. Uh, I still want you to watch my video solutions to see how I would have done it to see if there was an easier way you could have done it. Yeah. And then obviously it's better if you got it wrong and watch my video solutions so you can see where you went wrong. Because I don't know, you guys might have experienced it when you're doing a uh, mass in the, in the textbook, you do the question, you might get it wrong. You go to the answers to see what the answer was. And that's where you see you are wrong. And then you move on. But here, uh, I make sure you watch the video solution so you can see exactly how to do things. And also the 62 practice papers, you're going to find anywhere else that makes you do 62 practice papers. Yeah, they're all written by me. And they're, they're the best a way for you to prepare for your final exams. Yeah, obviously I teach you the content, all of the content, but the practice papers are super important and I walk you through every single one, yeah, in this kind of style of environment, yeah. Now all of that's just part of the standard package. That's the most basic, you know, package and if you want, you can upgrade to my pro package. Now the pro package is where I guarantee you an AA star, yeah. So I'll literally say you invest in my course and I'll guarantee you an AA star. And if not, I'll give you your money back because I'm so confident that I can get you the AA star, yeah? And on top of that, I'll give you a personal mentor. Now, my mentors are all students at top universities. So Imperial, LSC, UCL, they've all got their A stars in mass and they're there to be your personal trainer. So that's for the pro package. And as you can see here, my trust pilot, everything's five stars, essentially over a hundred reviews. So students and parents, who have used my course are confident and they're very happy with the experience uh, they're getting. So if you have any questions about it, guys, you can either wait to the end, ask me some questions or in the description, there's my WhatsApp. Just uh, message me on WhatsApp, uh, the code word summer, and I can send you more details. Uh, favor the pricing is going to be right at the end. Yeah. So guys, if you want to see the pricing, um, just wait until the end. Uh, Joel, you resolve vectors into components in year 12 physics, so that will help. Yeah, Joel, uh, that's true. I don't know if in physics, though, you guys resolve in I and J, even on uh, inclined planes. 
if they if you do then it'll be slightly different but if you resolve along the the incline then yes yeah, exactly the same uh uma what does it what day does it start it starts next monday so in less than a week guys i start the year 13 course um like i said this is the last session i'm doing for the free summer course but then monday is where you know things get serious and we're gonna bang out all the content in three no september october november december so in four months i'll finish all of pure mechanics basically then january we finish off uh stats but then we start papers so i get the full course done quick um but in good time so that we can smash out practice papers um Abdullah, the pro package is the one where I just guarantee you the AA star and I give you a personal mentor from a top uni. They can help you from the for your applications for UCAS as well because they're at the top unis themselves, right? Uh, Faith, the standard package depends on how much work you put in, right? So obviously we have then a, a more hands-off approach, like we're not guaranteeing you an AA star, nor do you have a personal mentor. So if you're going to put in the work yourself and hold yourself accountable then you can 100% get the AA star. My students last year who were on the standard and did all the work can still achieve it. Calm, see you there. Nice, Uma. How difficult of a topic is radians and sectors? Joel, quite easy for A-levels, for sure. Unless you saw my TikTok, I did a... I don't know if you guys saw. Did you see the question I did where you had the two sectors like this and then you had to calculate this area? That was a bit of a mad question. Um, Marab, if you have a B predicted, then like that doesn't mean anything. At the end, I've had many students go from a B to an A star in in less than a year. So, the B predicted is um your school's thing. Uh, Abdullah has changed um based on last week's. So, uh, yeah, I'll show you at the end. Okay, the next thing, guys, is pulleys. And I'm going to do a couple of pulleys questions, but then I'm going to do something known as subsequent motion questions, which are like probably the toughest questions um, in general. Yeah, the subsequent motion, because there's a few steps that we need to follow there. So as you read, I want you guys to tell me what forces we need to add to our diagram. So it says uh, two particles, P and Q, have masses 3 kg and 4 kg respectively. The particles are attached to the ends of a light and extensible string. Particle P is held at rest on a fixed rough horizontal table. The frictional force on P is 4.2 newtons. The string is parallel to the table and passed over a smooth, small smooth light pulley fixed at the edge of the table. Q hangs freely at rest vertically below the pulley as shown. P is released from rest with the string taut and slides along the table. Assuming that P has not reached the pulley, find the acceleration and tension in the string during the motion. Does the actual... Yes, Faith, it does. It works in this style where you have the lesson on YouTube, private link, uh, where I'll teach you the content, but then you'll go onto my platform to do my homeworks and all that stuff. Good. Uh, Amira, Florian, and Abdullah. So we've got the Pi called P. We're going to have 3G. Now remember, it's on a flat surface. There's no incline here, so the reaction force will also be 3G. Q is 4g and then good and the tension remember always points away from the objects in question so we are focusing on the particles right so the tension has to point away from the particles if i was focusing on the pulley and doing equations of motion with the pulley then the tensions would point away from the pulley but we're talking about the particles so tension points away from the particles uh, P has a frictional force of 4.2. Cool. And I think that's it. Now, P is accelerating towards the pulley. And Q is accelerating down towards whatever. So, guys, in the chat, uh, which one should we do? Might as well do P. So, guys, can you tell me what the equation of motion is for P? What's the equation of motion for P?
Don't worry about the up and down. A mirror T minus 4.2 is three times A. Joel agrees. I don't know agrees. Um, Ibrahim, Joe, the three you've written, remember the three and all that stuff is up and down. We're looking at horizontal. Yeah. So in terms of the horizontal, you'd be correct. But don't worry about the threes on the up and down. Yeah. All right. Nice. So the positive force for P, if it's moving to the uh, right. Yeah. Remember, guys. So T is the positive force there. If it's moving to the right. Subtract 4.2 equals the mass three times a then for q q is moving down so it'll be four g subtract t is the mass times acceleration good and there you can see one is positive and one's negative that's what we want so we add them these go so we have 4g minus 4.2 my numbers look I don't know will it be nice four times 9.8 minus 4.2 35 oh no it will be nice i don't know why i'm having doubts about myself today 35 is 7a so a is five meters per second squared let me just sub into maybe the first one to find t is three times a plus 4.2 nice what is that 15 plus 4.2 19.2 so you can say approximately 19 newtons there easy exactly guys mechanics trust me is not that hard yeah uh students believe mechanics to be hard but i think that's because when they first learn the topic it's explained in not a, a great way uh, unless you're learning with me of course then uh over time you realize that mechanics is probably the easiest one of all uh in the most recent exams the mechanics was actually the easiest paper. And in fact, I don't know, you guys, I did a an eight hour live stream before the exam. I actually predicted the full mechanics paper. So students smashed it because I, I basically predicted every question. Yeah, Ryan, it's true. Mechanics is really the same thing over and over. Uh, favor, so to work out tension, I just added the equations to find A and then I just subbed in this A into here and rearranged for t yeah all right now the last one is part b find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force exerted on the pulley by the string okay so what this is now saying is we're focusing our attention on the pulley yeah now guys if you're focusing on the pulley what forces are acting on the pulley would you say Uh, Ibrahim, 4G, 4 times 9.8, then I subtracted 4.2, yeah? It's 4G minus 4.2, so I just replaced G with 9.8. So guys, what forces are acting on the pulley? Aaron, T. Uh, Merab, it's easier than that. Much easier than that. Uh, Lucas, 2T essentially so just the tension guys if you are the pulley again i'm gonna make you imagine something imagine you are the pulley yeah the only thing you are in contact with is the string yeah the string is attached to other things but the pulley's not involved with that it's just the string and the tension must act away from the pulley yeah so can you see our attention has changed we're looking at the pulley now the tensions must point away from the pulley now what you need to do is imagine this when it says find the resultant force exerted on the pulley is imagine there was no table imagine the you had a piece of string and think of the pulley as a ball imagine you pulled the string horizontally this way and down this way what direction would this ball go so you have string and you pull like this yeah you're pulling like this with equal force like that which way is the pulley gonna go or the ball 
which direction would you say this ball is going to move? Maybe relative to the two strings. Diagonally, Josh, it will go diagonally. You're right. Is there a way of describing where diagonally it will go? Because diagonally could be like here, 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 here. So it's going to go down and left. You're right. Can you be more specific where down and left? There's some like key words you could say and I'll know. Nice, Josh. The 45 degrees. So down the middle, basically, in between the two tensions. Yeah. Because the two tensions are equal force, this is going to go straight down the middle. Yeah. And you're right. It is going to be 45 degrees. Yeah. Because essentially it's making 90 degrees at the pulley. It's just it looks circular just for the diagram. But remember the pulley is infinitely small. So this is the force we're trying to find. Now what we do is we do something known as resolving. Yeah, We work out what these tensions are. Yeah, what, what is this tension in the direction of R? And the way we do that is we form a right angled triangle. And you form a right angled triangle where R or where T is in the hypotenuse. Like this. And we're going to try and work out this direction here. Yeah. So, guys, think of it as just lengths. T is in the hypotenuse. I want to know what this length is. Can you tell me what that is in the chat? Using your Sokotoa, what would that length be? Good, Amira, we do. I see you, Joel. Uh, Sophia, why is it going down the middle? Because you're pulling in equal directions so that t to the left and the t down are equal in force so the direction which the pulley will go is strictly down the middle if one of them was bigger than the other then it will be pulling more towards the larger force but because they're equal force it has to go straight down the middle so in this case guys what is that force it's the force in between the right angle and the 45 degrees. So using your Sokotoa, we have T, which is the hypotenuse. What is the, uh, the side going to be with the, between the right angle and the 45 degrees. So Joel said T cos 45. Ryan agrees with Joel. So essentially, Joel, you're saying that the between 90 and 45 is the adjacent side, right? And the adjacent side with the hypotenuse should be cosine, right? It should be cos of the uh, angle, cos of 45. And because we know the uh, tension, it's T cos 45. Yeah, so you're essentially saying cos of 45 is the adjacent, which we're trying to find, divided by tension. We're just bringing that T up. Yeah, so it's T cos 45. So the weight wouldn't affect the tent. So Sophia, remember the weights and all that of the particles are all absorbed in the tensions. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what's going on with the particles. They are causing the tension to be that 19 we worked out in the previous part. Yeah, the main thing you just need to worry about is that the tensions are equal. Yeah, so it doesn't matter that the particles have different masses. The tension running through is constant. Yeah. Now, the next thing is that we resolve T, one of them, but there's going to be two of them. So the actual R is not just T cos 45, it's 2T cos 45. Yeah. Now, cos 45 is root 2 over 2. Yeah, so it's 2T times root 2 over 2. The 2s cancel. So R is T times root 2. But t is approximately 19. Yeah, which we can then just round it. So it's just uh, 19 times root 2. You could have typed this all in at the beginning. But essentially about 27 uh, newtons. Why is it 2t? I don't know. Because remember this t cos 45 was to do with this t. But then don't forget there was another tension which we just ignored which has the exact same. So you can see there's yellow and green. So it's not just T cos 45, which was just for the yellow. It's 2T cos 45 because there's two tensions pulling on the pulley from both ends. Yeah. 
Now, guys, this is one of those things where you should just remember this. Yeah. In year 13, I'll derive a very generic formula. But you could just remember on horizontal forces that reaction force is root 2 times t. But in year 13, I'll show you guys a more generic formula. I'll prove it to you in the exact same way, which is easier to remember. Um, this is a very specific case. I'll do a more generalized situation. But this is another one of those things where a lot of students haven't seen this before, but it is year 12 content. Yeah, but I've shown you where it comes from. Uh, so it won't be alien to you when you study with me in year 13. Because we're going to do the same thing on inclined planes. All right, cool. Just to practice a bit more. Uh, Abdullah, the root 2 came from cos 45. Yeah. Remember, go back. It says t cos 45. Cos 45 is root 2 over 2. Uh, it says... Buckets X and Y with masses 3K and 5K respectively are attached to the ends of a light and extensible rope. The rope passes over a smooth fixed pulley and the buckets hang with the rope taut. The system is released from rest. Write down the equation of motion for X and for Y. All right, so guys, um, how does this system look? Does it look like the previous example? Or do the tension, or do the ropes look different in terms of its orientation? How would you describe it to me? For vertical pulleys, R is also, yes, Lucas, good. Yeah, so it's now, so it's actually up and down only, yeah? So we're not actually resting on a table. With the table, it's like this. But here it's just up, down, exactly. So we just have one pulley. But we have the buckets just hanging down. Yeah. So we have X and Y. Um, X has mass 3K. So we'll have 3K. Whoa. 3KG. I don't know why I use K. Because now it looks like I'm doing 3 kilos. <laughs> Alright, we're going to go with it. I'm just going to play with you guys here. So it's not 3KG. Is 3, the multiplier is K, uh, 5 kg. Okay, the next thing is that the tensions point out. Arguably, these questions are easier to write down your equations of motion. But guys, in the chat, uh, did I say which one? Well, actually, we should know which um, particle is going to move downwards. Which particle here is going to move downwards, X or Y? Uh, Amira, don't worry about that. It's just like, I'm going to keep them side by side and I'm going to let go and see what happens. Yeah. Good, guys. So Y is going to come down because um, it's uh, heavier, right? So in our diagram, we're going to put acceleration down and this one accelerating up. So in the chat, um, can you guys write me the equation of motion for Y? Exactly. Because it's heavier, it's going to be the one that comes down. So guys, can you write me the equation of motion for y? I see you, Mira. Don't forget the k, though. That was my um, multiplier for the mass. Good, guys. So exactly. Oh, I see you corrected it. So 5kg down that's my uh force subtract the tension is 5k times a yeah good and you can kind of if you want you could tick these off make sure you've used everything for x it's moving up right so it'll be t subtract 3kg is the mass 3k a and as we do before we're going to add the two equations these go 5kg minus 3kg is 2kg. And if you've done this properly, guys, the k's should cancel. So A is a quarter G. I'll just leave it in terms of G. Actually, I'm doing part B now, aren't I? All right. In the read exam, guys, um, do it separately. Don't don't uh, be crossing things off for part A. Yeah, so keep, the, keep it nice and clean. And then for part B, add them up. Yeah. So don't do what I just did in the read exam. Then for part C, find the tension. I'm going to sub into the X one. 
t is 3kg plus 3ka. So we're doing 3 plus 3 quarters. What's that? 3 plus 3 quarters, 12 plus 3, 15 over 4kg. Is that right? You guys will correct me if I've made a mistake. Bro just flexed and thought we wouldn't notice. What? I'm wearing a baggy top. You guys can't see anything. I haven't got gains. This is a quadruple XL top as well, by the way. I think it's a bit large. It's like uh, when I'm on the train, it's just like like doing this. <laughs> it looks like a parachute. <laughs> nah, it's not. Um, yeah, I like to wear baggy clothes. The hat is the best for sure. No lep, how much do I bench? My one rep max is 165 kilos. It's actually on my Instagram. I don't know if it's on the highlight. It might be. If you go on the highlights part of my Instagram, you'll see the 165. This will be available for you. Yep. Swagstar. That's all good. You can watch it back. Uh, find the force exerted on the pulley by the rope. Okay, so guys, we're addressing the same question as before. If you're the pulley, tension is going to point away from you, right? Tension is going to point this way if you're talking about the pulley. Now, guys, think about it. You have ropes and you're pulling down. Which way does the pulley want to move? If all of us achieve an A-star, would you shave your head bald? Uh, Abdullah, if you're talking about my full course, for sure. If every student in my full course gets an A-star, then I will go bald, for sure. <laughs> Zane, you'll get there eventually, my friends. Good, down, yeah? So this is one of those. So in the previous example, it had to go uh, in a diagonal. But this one has to go down. I guess you can think of it as it's going down with the tensions, yeah? Show, virtually shake on it. There you go, guys. A virtual shake. If every student in my full course gets an A star, then I will go bold. I will go bold, I promise. I virtually shaked on it. Just dropping by to complain about the grey... Yo, Jack. <laughs> the grey boundaries were uh, very high. For real. Risky. Amira, I'm, uh, as much as I want everyone to get an A-star, for hundreds of students to all get an A-star, I'd be able to run for Prime Minister. Definitely would be able to run for Prime Minister. And I'll happily go bold at the same time. <laughs> Uh, Jack, what, what's uh, happening next with you? So guys, when you look at this, you can see R is just 2T. Yeah, both T's there. And we just worked out what T is. So we don't actually need to do any resolving. Yeah, it's just R is both of those tensions together. There's no angles here. So you're just times in this by 2, which is 15 over 2 um, kg. And that's Newtons. Remember guys, K is not kilos. Yeah, it's, it's just... The multiplier, K. Okay. Usually we use M. Uh, nice, Jack. And apprenticeships are incredible. Apprenticeships are harder, to, quite hard to get into. Uh, an apprenticeship where? Then part E uh, says, find the distance moved by Y in the first three seconds, assuming that X does not reach the pulley. Um, how would you guys address that one? How would you find the distance moved by Y in the first three seconds? Wait, how'd you do C? I'm so slow. That's fine, uh, Faith. Part C, remember, was uh, we I took this equation. I took that. Yeah, here. I just rearranged for T. So the minus 3 kg, I moved to the other side. And that A, I substituted 1 quarter G. Yeah, that's what I did for part C. Let me know if that makes sense. Nice, guys. So, lovely bit of Suvat. Yeah. And Matthew, U is zero for sure. Good. So, Suvat. It wants to know the distance move. So, they want S. I'm just going to call it H. U is zero. Yeah, we're starting from rest, which I've said here. Um, T is three. A is one quarter G. And we're not interested in V. So, what links all of those together? For year 13 course, let me know, guys, what what links S, U, A, and T. For year 13 course, do you go through any of the year 12 stuff? 
Uh, sometimes Abdul. So like I do one lesson on exponentials revision before we do differentiation because you need to be up to date with your exponential stuff. Um, I do some binomial revision before I do the normal distribution. I do some year 12 mechanics before I do other mechanic stuff. So it happens, but not all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I do, Abdul. Nice, Jack. Well done. Which firm are you doing that at? So it looks like um, uh, you're sorted anyway, even though the grey boundaries were high. Good, guys. So it's S is UT plus half AT squared. Exactly, Abdul. Don't worry, man. I, I got you guys. I know exactly when you guys need a revision and when you just get straight into it with, with uh, uh, year 13 stuff. Nice one, Jack. Good luck with your apprenticeship. One of the Lung Gang OGs. Zero S is H. Half of A. A is one quarter G. Times T squared, which would be nine, right? Uh, 1.125. Uh, maybe. I'm going to leave in terms of G, actually. I'm going to leave in terms of G. So a half of a quarter is one eighth. So nine eighths G. Pokey, yeah, you will. Eventually. Nice, Hassan. <laughs> uh, Ryan, have you ever thought about doing mass paper speed runs? Do you mean just a random paper? I could do that eventually. I think what you guys need is to actually see the full course first. So learn everything. And then, um, what's it? If I do a speed run, then... Uh, you guys will actually understand what I'm doing at the same time, right? So definitely something I want to, I could do. When I was your age, yeah, when I was your age, I'd done my A-level maths already. The hardest paper was something known as C4, because uh, it went C1 to C4, the core subjects. Um, the C4 paper, I finished in 20 minutes. So it's a 75 mark paper. I finished it in 20 minutes. Also, the hardest paper in further maths was called FP3. FP3, um, I did that. I was 17 when I did the further maths though. But in FP3, I finished that paper in 25 minutes. Um, and I got 100% in all of them. So speed runs should be quite nice for me. I think I'll be all right. <laughs> to make Neil bold. <laughs> Nice, uh, KWH. Well done. That's a W. I keep thinking about that meme where the guy is, does he bite his medal? And he's like, that's a W. Oh no, he does, he does like West Side or something. Do you guys know what the meme I'm on about? I think it's like an American footballer. He bites his medal and then he's like, that's a W. That's what I keep thinking about. Uh, Hassan, I don't have a further maths course, but I do on TikTok upload some further maths, uh, topics on there. That you guys know. No, not Ali G. Thanks for the service. Hope you're going ahead of. Yeah, I've done it. On my course, you're going to be way ahead of anyone who's not on my course. So that's an RIP for anyone who's not on my course because we move faster than everyone else. Imagine, I, I mean, I have the same amount of time. I'm doing four hours of you guys, but um, I, I'm very efficient with the way I teach. I don't over teach you guys. Uh, Raz, would I recommend getting an iPad? So one of my, if you guys have been following me on Instagram, I went to visit one of my GCSE students, uh, Ishak, and he uh, was showing me what he was doing during uh, uh, exam season, even during like, uh, what was it, during Ramadan and stuff, like when he was going to pray and he was in the car, he was watching my streams and he had his iPad and stuff like that, like all across his, his uh uh was it his thighs in the car just doing his work like it was pretty cool the good thing about having an ipad is you can save my workbooks and you can have it all stored nicely so yeah i think it's nice but if you don't it's not it's not essential suarez no uh faith we're gonna be done like in 15 minutes or so yeah i got that i think i've got the tab essay but i haven't used it in a long time yeah zane it's, it's good for a vision for sure uh, I need to find that meme though, guys. The That's a W. Okay, so guys, one more question. 
Uh, subsequent motion. Now these, I would say, if you haven't practiced it a lot, are quite tough. But um, with a bit of practice, trust me, it's the same thing. Mechanics really is the same thing. Um, you just need enough exposure. When it comes to revising, we're doing AS papers help. Uh, Ryan, at the end of year 13, no. Now, it'll be good to refresh your memory. But for next year, don't worry about doing AS papers for revision. I agree, Hassan. What's the link to your website thing where the worksheets and all are? Uh, Pokey, what, what do you mean my workbooks? Do you mean for this stuff? For my, uh, for my, uh, uh, the free streams? Then for that, just go my WhatsApp on, in the description. And one of my team will put you on the, my website. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, are you talking about the meme? That that's the W meme. I don't know. It could be. I can check it after and we can see. All right. So let's check after. Uh, after this, we'll check that it's a W. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it though, but we can check. So it says two blocks X and Y with masses 1.1 kg, 1.5 kg are attached to the ends of a light inextensible rope. Block X lies on a rough table 10 meters from a small smooth pulley, which is fixed at the edge of the table. The rope passes over the pulley. Y hangs freely with the rope taut two meters above the floor. A frictional force of magnitude 0.2 G opposes the motion of block X. The system is released from rest. Find the acceleration and the time taken for Y to reach the floor. All right, let's, let's do our diagram. So here we're practicing doing our own sketches. So block X can be here. I think it's block Y is hanging, right? Yeah. So it's block Y. Um, we've got the gravities... So we got 1.1 G, but remember the upward force will also be 1.1 G, which is why we just don't really use it. Then we have 1.5 G, then we have the tensions as always. Uh, we have 10 meters between the particle X and the pulley. Ah, so we have Y is hanging two meters above the floor and a frictional force of 0 0.2 G from X. I think that's it, right? Find the acceleration of the system. Okay. Um, do you guys want to do X? Why don't you guys tell me what the equations of motion for X are? So remember X is going to go towards the pulley. And Y is going to be coming down towards the ground. No, he's pokey for October mocks. I'm pretty sure they're going to test us on AS level. Yes, yeah, so Abdullah, that's what I'm saying. So for if you're preparing for in June, you should not be doing AS papers. But if you're talking about now, then yeah, sure, you can do AS papers for your revision. When would tension be going away? So Faith, if we're talking about, so whatever you're talking about, tension always points away. Yeah, so if I'm talking about X and Y, tension always points away. If I'm talking about the pulley, then tension will point away from the pulley. But there's no situation where tension is not going to be pointing away. It always points away. That's how the force behaves. If you're talking about thrust, thrust always points towards the object in question. But for that, you can't do a string. A string can't produce thrust. Uh, I don't know. What I can show you to demonstrate. You've got like a string here. There's my necklace. Don't know if you guys can really see. So I'm, I'm pulling it apart. Yeah, when I pull it apart, tension is pointing away. Yeah. The tension is pointing away from my fingers. But as soon as I start bringing my hands together. Yeah, look what happens. Yeah. Strings can't produce uh, thrust. Because look what happens. They just collapse into each other. They can only produce tension, not thrust. However, my pen, because it's rigid, I can pull away. Yeah, right now I'm pulling them apart. That's tension. I can push towards each other. That's thrust. Here, the thrust will be pointing towards my fingers this way. When I'm pulling away, 
the tensions are pointing towards the middle. So it depends what you're talking about. But in terms of a string, there can never be a situation where you have thrust in a string. Yeah? Hopefully that clarifies. Uh, Marab, if you have a mock in December, for sure they'll include some year 13 stuff. Okay, so you guys are right. So, uh, for x, the positive force is t minus 0.2g is the mass 1.1a. Then for y, the positive force is 1.5g, yeah, going down, minus the tension is 1.5a. Add them up. As we always do, t and minus t go, and we have 1.3g is 2.6a. So a is a half g. Nice. All right, part B. Find the time taken for y to reach the floor. So I think we all know, we practice this now. Is it suvat, right? So suvat. Uh, S is 2, right? It's traveling a distance of 2, starting from rest. We don't know what V is. We have a half G. And uh, we want T. So I think it's the same as before, S-U-A-T. After a year of mechanics, I've only just found out how to do it. Exactly, Pokey. This this is quite common, I find, with students. They, Because initially, I would probably say most teachers in the country are uncomfortable teaching mechanics. Very uncomfortable. If you look at, if any of you lot look at physics, there's not many physics teachers in the country. Yeah, just in general. There's not many math specialists teachers in the country there's even less physicists so the majority of people who teach a level maths really do not like teaching mechanics because they don't understand it themselves yeah so hopefully doing this with me is clarifying a few thing a few things but yeah physics is a is an issue it's the same issue as further maths there's hardly any uh, teachers out there who can teach further maths a level so here we've got S is UT plus half AT squared. So we have uh, U is zero. Two is a half of A, which is a half G times T squared. Uh, we're going to have to approximate this. Um, how do I best want to do this? Let me just simplify it for now. So G is 9.8. We're going to do 9.8 divided by 4. Uh, where's my calculator? 9.8. I'll read your, the chat in a second, guys. So we have that. Now we're going to do 2 divided by that, isn't it? To move it to the other side. 2 divided by the answer. So 40 over 49 is T squared. And T is. Root that. So we've got 2 root 10 over 7. Now, remember, guys, we use gravity, so let's approximate that to 2SF. So, 0 0.90. Now, when you approximate to 2SF, guys, do not leave a 0 0.9. Add the 0 at the end. I've seen examiners that take marks away if you don't put the 0 at the end, yeah? Even though 0 0.9 and 0 0.90 are exactly the same, if we're saying 2SF, we want to see two significant numbers, yeah? So, just be careful. All right, what, is you, what are you guys saying? Yeah, I'm doing with physics mechanics. Uh, don't worry, Pokey, the normal math, the maths here will help somewhat with physics mechanics. It's just we don't do energy equations, but if anyone's doing further maths, FM1, it will. Yo, Fenton. My maths teacher is so good with mechanics. She teaches so quick. quick. That's good, Faith. You're one of the lucky students. <laughs> one of my maths teachers even said they didn't do mechanics at A-level. Yeah, it's true, Ryan. So, like, back in the day, depends how old they are. Um, you could literally just do statistics. It's actually new that you have to do both. I had a physics teacher as my math teacher for as well. Yeah, Matthew, that's good. It probably should be the case. Unless you have a math teacher that can teach all of them, then, yeah, the physics teacher probably should teach the mechanics. My teacher has a math degree. And same... Oh, Florian, you're very lucky. Your, ma your teacher has a math degree and your physics teacher has a physics degree. You're in a very privileged position, my friend. 
<laughs> well, uh, could you have done those questions where there's a trade? Yeah, Pokey, in my homework for this lesson, I have a trader question. Uh, thanks, Faith. I appreciate it. I've heard half the content in further mass is physics content. Um, I'm not familiar with the physics curriculum, but the physics mechanics side is very much similar to normal maths and the FM1. If I had to choose one, it would be pure. As in Abdullah, for sure, pure is always king. But then mechanics is a close second. Could you, so you could take three pure papers back in the, no, so Hamza, you had to do the four pure papers, but then you had two optional modules, which you could either do stats and mechanics at a very basic level or stats, stats, mechanics, mechanics. It was up to you which one you picked or your school picked for you. Uh, Ryan, decision mass really was if you're doing further mass. Um, it wasn't really taken if you're doing normal mass. Dory, stats, it gets better over time, yeah? Okay, now, this is the subsequent motion uh, section, guys. So it says, find the total distance traveled by X before it first comes to rest. So I'm, I'm just going to talk you through it, yeah? And then I want you guys to try my homework for this. You have your, which look like this. I'm just, because the, the camera's reversed, I'm like making sure. So, okay. So you can, oh man. All right, so here are the pi cores, yeah? First, what's happening is this. They're moving down. So one pi core is moving down. X is moving this way, yeah? So in the first part of the motion, Y moves down two meters, X moves across two meters, yeah? So in the first part of the motion, Y moves down two meters, X moves across two meters. So in the first part, x moves 2 meters. Yeah, we want the total distance moved by x. And then x might be here. Yeah, after moving 2 meters. Now, what I want you guys to tell me is once x is here, what is really important for us to find which determines how far it then travels? Because y is going to hit the ground and stop. And then the tension, the, the string is going to go slack, yeah? It's basically going to disappear because Y has stopped moving and X is going to keep going, yeah? Good, Joel. The final speed of Y, which is going to be the same as X because they're traveling together, right? So both X and Y travel together. They're going to have the same speed until Y hits the ground. And good, uh, Lucas, the new acceleration, yeah? So guys, once Y hits the ground... X is going to keep going and it's going to stop moving eventually. There's going to be a new acceleration, yeah? So, what we need to do is we need to calculate what this V is. Yeah, we need to know what that velocity is to calculate how far uh, X is going to travel afterwards because the bigger V is, the further it's going to travel, yeah? The, far the faster it's traveling, the further it's going to go, yeah? Now, looking at this, V equals U plus AT is going to be the easiest one to use because we calculated what T is, right? So, in that first part of the motion, you can use that pokey as well, yeah, if you want. So, V is U, the initial speed, but the initial speed was zero, yeah, when they were both connected. Uh, it's just A times T, yeah, which we can approximate, well, Let's just keep it exact for now. That 0.9 we're taking forward from part B. That's okay. So 0 0.5 times 9.8 um, times 0 0.9. So 441. I'm going to write that and then we're going to approximate right at the very end. Now, this is part one. This is part one of the motion when they're connected. Now we're going to look at part two of the motion where they are now not connected because y hits the ground then x carries on going like we said the acceleration is going to change so here's my particle x yeah guys look at this diagram here what forces are still acting on x even though it's not connected with y anymore what forces are still acting on x
Good pokey. And Lucas, friction. Yeah? And Tyra. Good friction is still acting. Yeah? That is 0.2G. Now, one thing I condition my students on is that X is still moving to the right. So we still point acceleration this way, which means we need to label a right force. But the only right force beforehand was T, right? But that's gone now because they're not connected. Because of that, I tell my students to write zero. Yeah, because then when we do our equation of motion, A should be negative. So my equation of motion goes my positive force zero, subtract 0.2G, is the mass of x, which is 1.1, times the acceleration. And you see here, you're going to work out a to be negative, which is very important. So a is the negative of 0 0.2 divided by 1.1, which I don't think even simplifies. So 2 over 11g. 2 over 11g. Okay. Now, finally, we just do SUVAT again. Yeah, we're just going to do SUVAT. So I'm just going to do it over here. So we want S. I'm going to call it H. The initial speed, remember we worked it out to be 4.41. We want to know when does it come to stop. And A, we've now just worked out to be some negative because it's going to slow down, right? So what links all of these together? In fact, I think, uh, Pokey, you put it before. V squared is U squared plus 2AS. Yeah, that's the one. Now, V is zero. So when we arrange for S, it's going to be, move that over, negative U squared over 2A. I'm just going to do this in the calculator. You predicted the future, Pokey. So we got minus U squared. U is 4.41 squared over... 2 times a. a is minus 2 over 11 times 9.8. Boom. 5.45 dot dot dot. Yeah, is that my answer? The 5.45 dot dot dot. So I would say, I'm just saying, yep. So like, I would say just 5.5 .5 is my answer. Adam agrees. Good, Emma. Yes, guys, don't forget, you need to add the two. Yeah, you need to add the two at the end. Good, Tritty. And then we round it. Yeah, so the total is not 5.5. .5. We can all add two to that number. Yeah, it'll be 7.5 meters. Yeah. Guys, there's a question in my homework for this. Please do it. There's a, a pulley's question, a subsequent motion. There's a, a very interesting question on there I want you guys to try out. I do a lot of those in my uh, full course as well. Yeah. But that is um, a subsequent motion question, what you can expect. And it's the same thing every time. You always calculate the end speed when they are connected. You calculate the new acceleration. Then you just see whatever they're trying to find. Yeah. All right, cool. Is there work solution? Yes, uh, cow, go, move. <laughs> what a name. Yeah, uh, cow, go, moo, moo. There is um, work solutions. I have video solutions for every single question. Yeah. So any question you do, I make sure you know exactly how to do it. Yeah. And um but it does tell you if you're correct or incorrect, but I still uh, have work solutions so you guys can see how to do it, yeah? Uh, now, like I said, guys, this is the last session, yeah, of my free summer school. I've had an amazing time with you, but starting from Monday, I am going to be focusing on the year 13s on my full course, the Lungang crew. Um, if you're still interested, guys, just message me the code word summer. You can still see... You know, when you break down the upfront costs per hour, it's still like the price of a coffee, yeah? So if you want to lock in the discount, these are the full price of my course and it's slowly going to start moving towards that. I'm just trying to give as big of a discount uh, uh, as possible for now. But 
um, as I said, it's it's slightly it's going up and up and up every time. So if you want to lock in as cheap as possible, just hit me up ASAP. And we start on Monday. So there's limited spots available. Uh, make sure you message me if you want to join from the beginning, which is really important. Um, I can answer some of your questions as well if you have them. What would you say is the hardest year two for the mass topic? Lucas, uh, I assume you're talking about um, either Corpure 1 or Corpure 2, right? Um, I'd probably say... No, I don't know. Maybe Polar... No, maybe... I think Polar... Polar stuff is the most involved. Like, areas with Polars could be, arguably... Yeah, maybe Polar coordinates, just because it's quite different. Second order differential equations are really easy. So yeah, maybe Polars, I would say. Yeah, Merab, they are, unfortunately, as time goes on. Yo, Cookie, what's up? Uh, but Pokey, the per hour is just me breaking it down. I don't charge per hour. Um, yeah, Abdullah, that is the pro. That was uh, a while ago now. But yes, that was for the pro. The meme. Go oh, the meme. See you, Ninja. <laughs> nice, Mirab. Uh, yeah, let me check the that meme, whatever. The meme was... One sec, I'll check on YouTube. Uh, that's a W. That's a W meme. Oh, here it is. Wait, is it this one? One second, I'm just... Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, it is this one. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Wait, let me uh get this up here. One sec. Can you guys see this? The only thing is, I don't know if the uh, the sound works. Uh, if I do this, guys, you have to double check to see if you can hear the the sound. You guys still there? Just double checking, <laughs> making sure you guys are still available. Is this guy? Oh, it was, uh, I don't know, was it Aaron who said it? The, uh, wait, is it, I'm on the right thing? Oh, no, you guys are still there. I don't know if you guys can hear this. I want everybody to look at me. I'm going to pass it to coin out that say one thing. He just says, that's a double. Let's go. That's a W. That's a double. That's E1. That's E1. That's a W. How many people want to eat a W tonight? I'm going to eat a W tonight. Come in, man. Oh, you can hear it. There's a W. Yeah, that's the meme. You guys can do that. Every time you get a question correct, you can be like, that's a W. For you. What time would the year 13 lesson start? Because I get home by 6. Yeah, 6 to 8, Monday and Wednesday. If you guys want to see what is in it, that is the uh, packages. Yeah. <laughs> But that's it, guys. Uh, I've had a great time with you doing the summer course. Uh, I look forward to all of the students joining me on the full course, starting from Monday, four hours a week. It's going to be intense. I look forward to seeing how you guys cope with it. But anyone who always does my homeworks and engages always gets the top grades. I'm super confident. Just message me the code word summer on my WhatsApp is in the description. And I look forward to seeing you guys uh next week in it on monday monday exactly monday six o'clock guys we kick it off we're gonna go it's gonna be hardcore straight away no playing about with year 13 nice no problem guys i'll see you all uh next monday the lung gang crew let's go norris marab see you norris see abdul Norris Faith, take care. Lung Gang and Nat. Thanks, Favor. Nice, Ibrahim. Norris Adam, take care. Thanks, Sophia, you too. See you, Aaron. For sure, Pokey, that's the only option. Yes, Abdul, the first lesson is this coming Monday. 
the 4th of September at 6 o'clock. El Mozi, let's go. <laughs> See you then, Abdullah. Lung gang, let's go. Well, Faith, they're still on YouTube. You can watch them back if you want. See you on Monday, Farhan. W, Bob and that. Lung gang, let's go, Lucas. Uh, Abdul, Abdullah, the uh, Lung Gang is my community on TikTok. We built it whilst we were beefing the Americans because they say Ellen. We don't say that around here. In a bit, Uma. See you, anointing. See you, Jammer. Lung Gang and that. In a bit, Adam. See you, Faith. I'm going to be ending stream, guys, in... Uh, about a minute. Yeah, Ellen in the exponentials. But we call it Lun. Well, we tend to call it Lun in England. That's anointing. You too. <laughs> but yeah, guys, if you have any questions, just WhatsApp me or drop me a DM on Insta. It's been great hanging out with you guys. I'll see you all next uh, Monday.